In this video we will model a range of different cargoes, both from scratch and from kits. Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. Today we're gonna make loads of load. No, seriously, every car needs a cargo. And that's what we're gonna do today. Different type of cargoes made in different ways for different type of cars. We're starting off this uh, cargo marathon by building kits from a manufacturer called Modellbahn Union. These type of laser cut kits really come in handy when it comes to model cargoes with complex shape or texture. You will now find a link in the upper right hand corner to the Modellbahn Union webshop where you find the range of cargoes. All of the kits are made up in the same way. Meaning, from bottom there is a spacer made up from a number of different layers depending on what type of car the car was fitted for. A mounting plate is then glued on top of the stack of spacers. Then the cargo itself is glued on top of that mounting plate. In this case the cargo is light colored cut planks. The texture of the planks is beautifully engraved in the laser cut process. There are also two layers of planks. The bottom layer is a solid layer, whilst the top layer consists from individual planks. And we'll all wrap it up with some straps, which holds the cargo in place whilst it's uh, traveling down the lines on our model railroad. With the straps in place, it's just to snap in the cargo into our... This is a Ianos car. And it easily snaps in and the fit is just perfect. I built in total three kits. This one has darker planks. And this one's filled with bricks. When it comes to bulk materials delivered in open cars, there is a quite easy to make this on your own. I'm using a, a balsa sheet. This one's a six millimeter or a quarter of an inch. And I cut it to the same size as the car floor. So this will be our mounting plate for the cargo, which will be glued on top. The spacers are made from the same balsa sheet and cut to 10 millimeter height. The purpose with these spacer is to push the mounting plate closer to the edge of the car. I glue the spacers in place using fast set glue. The great advantage by using 6mm balsa besides the low cost is that it's easy to form. So it's lightweight, easy to form. In this case I will do gravel, coal and buff. I form the mounting plate in like if I had two piles of uh, material then I have like the two piles already shaped which reduces the drying time for the glue and the weight of the car. Here are the actual cargoes. These type of materials are available from a range of different manufacturers. It's charcoal in the middle and the other two are colored gravel. Once we have decided what type of cargo, we can paint the mounting plate to a matching color. This one's white, whilst I'm painting the other one brownish tone and the charcoal one in black. I glue it all in place using a PVA glue. You can also use like static grass glue or any glue that dries transparent and matte. So I squeeze some glue out and then I spread it with a paint brush and then I apply the cargo on top of that glue. All right. And I follow the same routine for the brown buff as well for that coarse light gray gravel. Once dry, it's just to snap them in place in the car. Up here in the north, where I live. Hey, the north! Winter's coming. Timber transport is a really common theme for most model railroaders. Easiest way is to harvest some. This is maple 
branches. I cut them in the garden during autumn, cut them to short pieces here in my workshop and they turn out really good. Another good thing with these is that they do not crack, they do not change color and they look so nice putting a chain on. But hey, in my area they have never used chains to strap the timber. So no chains for me, but maybe that's an option for you. If you live in a city or in the desert or wherever you cannot find maple branches, this is an option for you. Here I use flower support sticks in different uh, diameter. This one's about quarter of an inch, six millimeter, down to three millimeter. And then I put coarse sand plaster for indoor use. Once dry and cured, we can paint this using acrylic paints. I use burnt umber and orange. The top part of this type of tree is uh, typically orange brown, whilst the bottom part of the tree is brownish brown. I then cut it into length. It's a uh, six centimeter length, which uh, fits my cars very well. I then use my hobby knife to cut and you know, make marks representing cutaway branches from from this. Then I just have a plastic insert into my car and then I put a first a layer of logs and then I put some PVA glue and put the next layer on top and so on until I reach the top of the stakes in this stake car. I really like these because they can be unloaded at destination and still look good being put on the ground there. Tubing is also a cargo I really like to have on my layout. I make these from straws. Unfortunately at this season they only had blue and yellow and pink ones because it's a student graduate time. Okay, so I have to paint them black. Otherwise I would prefer using black straw. You can find them on the bar or during Halloween time. I cut them to length and then I will paint the top coat, which will be olive green. This one's from Vallejo. It's a 7894, a kind of military green. I airbrush it to save some time, but hey, it can be paintbrushed as well. Every second layer of tubes will have an intermediate layer of beams. These beams are made from evergreen strip styrene. I sand the styrene strip slightly on a coarse sanding paper to give it some texture and then I paint it with Humbrol 110 which is natural wood. Then it gets a kind of light brown color which will fit fine. I cut it to the width of the cargo and put some facet glue on top. Then it's time to put the tubing in place. Then next layer and then I paint the inside of the pipes in the cut ends with black. I trim the beams to length. I've learned that it's always good to add something extra to everything. So I will do with this one as well. This is a sticker from, my, I think it was in a bus or something. Now it would instead serve as marking for these uh, tubings. So I put the sticker into water, let them sit there while I'm gluing the second layer of tubes. I then apply the stickers using a paintbrush and a scalpel. Excess water is removed using a, a dry brush. Yeah, this is cool. These tubes will transport radioactive wastewater in a plutonium refinery. I make the straps from a yellow piece of paper. I cut that to a tiny width, not even measurable, and I glue it in place using laser cut glue or PVA glue or whatever glue you have which dries transparent and matte. All right, let's put this in place. Now it's on its way to a secret plutonium factory. I don't know if I'm like a hoarder or something because I've been saving all of the scrap pieces from probably all of the plastic kits I ever built. These parts come in handy when making scrap loads. I paint them using cavalry brown and burnt umber. With these two colors I paint the cargo holder which I made previously. Once painted I take some recognizable metal objects like uh, this uh, plate roof for instance. It's always great to have amongst the cargo as an eye catcher. 
Then I glue the plastic parts in place using the PVA glue or whatever glue you find suitable for this type of material. Yeah, like this. And I put the corrugated plate roof on top here. Yeah, like this. And a few bars as well. I first paint the entire cargo using thinned brown paint just to give a foundation for the rust which I will stipple on later. Rust dirt. Oh man, I just had to growl there. I don't know how many of you uh, model railroaders watching this uh, like growl music. Well, I do sometimes when I'm vacuuming the house for instance. Vacuum. All right, I think we're about done. I'm adding also some uh, pastel chalk here, which is in, in a light rust tone to get some texture. And then it's just to snap that cargo in place as well. Yeah, great. It's on its way to the scrapyard. All right, so let's go for some cargo parade. Here's the laser cut kits from Modellbound Union, the light colored planks and the dark colored planks. You see the beautiful texture the laser cutter has made on these planks, looks awesome. And the bricks with all its strapping, this is my favorite for sure. Then we have the logs made from flower support sticks with the plaster. We have the nuclear wastewater tubing on its way to secret destination. It's the charcoal to the coaling station for the steamers and the gray and brown gravel. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please help others to find this video by giving it a thumbs up and share it on your favorite internet forums. If you have any questions at all about the materials, or anything, uh, please post them in the comment field below and I'll respond to that as soon as possible. If this video helps you with your hobby, please remember that all of this is made possible because a few of you viewers are supporting the channel. So think of this as a magazine subscription. You give something to get something back. And get on to Patreon and set up a support account there from like one or two dollars per month or make a one-off donation in the PayPal dialog found in the video description. Please subscribe to the channel and enable the bell and you will get a notification once next video is published. Until that happens, see ya! This video was brought to you in cooperation with Modellbahn Union and DM Toys.